In today's video I'll show you my tips and tricks for how I managed to eat Dr Gregor's daily dozen whilst keeping my IBS in check. If you're curious about eating more plant foods but you're not sure how to juggle your plants and poops then this video is for you. The full recipes for everything shown in this video are available at the links below. This video focuses on my food choices, preparation methods and how I personalise the daily dozen to suit me and my gut and how you can do the same. To show you that it can be done I also keep this whole day of eating gluten free and low FODMAP. Whilst that's not a part of the Daily Dozen challenge, I know it's a big part of managing gut symptoms for many of you. Ready to see if I complete the challenge? Let's get into it. Let's start with mandarin for breakfast. Sticking to one whole portion of fruit per sitting is generally recommended for anyone with gut issues, particularly on the low FODMAP diet. Much of the insoluble fibre in fruit is in the skin, peel and seeds. Removing as much of this as possible can generally help to make fruit easier to digest. To keep things quick and simple, I just remove the pith and chop each segment into chunks. If you need to get a bit more serious about removing the excess fibre, then you can supreme your citrus fruit. This involves using a knife much sharper than this one, a flexible serrated knife is perfect. Stand the fruit on its end and cut away the outside peel, then carefully separate the citrus flesh from the thin skin. Although this method does result in considerably more waste, it does leave you with the juicy naked citrus slices and removes almost all of the fibre. To minimise the waste, I try to squeeze as much flesh and juice as I can from the leftover skin. Onto the porridge, which can be made from gluten-free oats if required. There's me squeezing the life out of that pulp. I took a liberty here and counted the shredded coconut towards my daily nut servings. I also only used half my flax serving here so that it didn't FODMAP stack with the oats. My personal milk preference is usually oat or soya, but almond milk is the lowest in FODMAPs. Again, cooking the oats well so that they're soft rather than chewy can make them easier to stomach. You could even take a stick blender to this to make them extra smooth and creamy. You can soak your oats in water the night before to make them easier to digest. Depending on your tolerances, you could add additional fresh or dried fruit, extra chopped nuts, seeds and nut butters. It's snack time and commercially canned beans, especially once drained and rinsed, are much gentler on your gut than dried beans cooked from scratch at home. If you're eating low FODMAP, you'll need to accurately weigh your beans. Although this isn't necessary for most people, if you're new to eating or increasing beans in your diet, then start slowly. You may find that adding small and manageable amounts of beans to every meal or snack throughout the day might be easier to digest than packing them all into one main meal. A simple fibre hack that I use is to consciously try to look for multigrain versions of basic products such as bread, crackers and pre-cooked grains. And I'm sneaking in an extra fruit here in the form of tomato. Depending on your tolerances, increase the amount of crackers and bean dip to your appetite and try to include a protein source in every meal or snack. Rewind to the previous day and I always soak my quinoa overnight to reduce the soapy saponins, assisted digestion and decrease cooking time. Soaking, rinsing and draining your grains before cooking can help to remove some of the natural anti-nutrients and make them more digestible and taste better. You might also want to consider cooking your grains on their own before adding them into your recipe. That way more of the water soluble fermentable carbs are leached into the cooking water and diluted from the grains before you eat them. These FODMAPs are partly responsible for the fats and bloating sometimes associated with eating certain grains. Once again opting to peel your veg removes much of the fibre and my trick for both easier digestion and speedier cooking is to grate or chop your veggies as finely as possible. Some parts of plants such as the leaves of spring onions or leeks contain less FODMAPs than the bulbs making them easier on the gut. After soaking the quinoa, I don't find it necessary to cook it separately. So in this recipe, mine gets cooked at the same time as the rest of the soup. But when I do remember to think ahead, I often pre-cook a large batch of grains at the start of the week and will add that to whatever I'm cooking throughout the week. This means that I'm typically eating twice cooked grains. I just add them at a later stage in the recipe to heat through until piping hot. Soups and stews are a great way to sneak in additional veggies and beans that you might not usually eat at a typical portion size. If you're particularly sensitive to textures then blending your soup until smooth can make a world of difference. Not only to the variety of ingredients that you can include but it also makes it easier on your gut. And as always adding protein wherever you can to each meal helps keep you feeling fuller for longer and gets you closer to your daily requirements in manageable portions. 
Whilst the low FODMAP portion sizes for beans, grains and fruit featured here today may not reach the Daily Dozen recommendations, the Daily Dozen guidelines should be seen as something to aim for. You might not get there right from the start and some days you'll do better than others, but slow, persistent changes over time, working consistently towards optimal portion sizes, will eventually get you closer to your goal. This is the slow but steady strategy I use to transition away from the low FODMAP diet into eating the widest possible variety of plant foods at decent portions without constantly aggravating my IBS. Once your microbiome adapts to the increase in fibre, you may find that you can ease up on your prep work, eat larger, more satisfying portions in one sitting and eat a much wider variety of plant foods than you could previously tolerate. Don't forget those all important herbs, spices and flavours. Not only do most of them have a positive effect on the digestive system, but they can truly make or break a meal. Using familiar flavour profiles on plant-based dishes can often fool your senses so you don't even notice the switch from animal products. Let's move on to my afternoon snack. Frozen berries are an affordable convenience food that I can't do without and an easy way to eat berries every day whatever the season. I also added the rest of my daily flaxseed serving here and if you take away one tip from this video then let it be this, the hack of splitting up high fibre servings into smaller portions throughout the day. And just like that, we've made it to tea time. Choosing firm or very firm tofu is the key to fewer fart-inducing FODMAPs. Remember those water-soluble fermentable carbs? They're found in the packaging liquid and the water present within the tofu itself. So squeezing and draining as much of that out as possible naturally makes the tofu more digestible. It also frees up space within the tofu for it to better absorb flavours and helps to make the tofu crisper when it's cooked. You can see here the amount of water just pressing for half an hour managed to remove. Eaten straight from the packet, that water and the FODMAPs it contains would have ended up in our meal. If you've seen any of my previous tofu videos, you'll know what's coming up. My number one top tip for transforming the texture of tofu making it more palatable to newbies, quicker to cook and it gets past even the most die-hard tofu haters by grating the tofu into tiny fine shreds. To get the tofu lovely and crisp, fry it in hot oil, adding whatever flavours you fancy or that suit your recipe. I always do this first before adding anything else to give the tofu enough room in the pan to brown and crisp up. Once it's cooked to your liking, remove the tofu and continue with the rest of the ingredients. As I mentioned before, you can find this full recipe in the description, but this technique with the tofu works in everything from soup to stir fries, and it can be easily adapted to suit you and your preferences. In terms of my daily dozen goals, the base of this one meal exceeds the day's veg requirements and also includes a bean, a green and a grain. Tofu and tempeh count as one of your daily dozen bean options. I've always found it much easier on my gut than most beans, so I try to include it a few times a week. The foundation for the dressing is tahini, which counts as a nut butter and goes towards my nut intake. To keep the meal low FODMAP, I use one tablespoon of tahini per serving, which is half the daily dozen portion. But if I count my shredded coconut for breakfast, I'm happy to call that good. Finally, I finish the rice with my homemade red cabbage sauerkraut, which counts as my cruciferous veggie for the day. So how did I do overall? Well, by my calculations, I was only one portion of fruit short from completing the full daily dozen challenge. But considering I kept the day strictly low FODMAP, I think that's pretty good going. This may all seem a bit labour intensive, but depending on how your gut adapts, you might not need to be this diligent long term. And it can help enormously in the beginning to get a wider range of plants and fibre into your diet. I hope this has given you some ideas for attempting your own daily dozen challenge or at the very least upping the plant foods in your diet. I'll leave the links to Dr Gregor's official challenge in the description box below. Please let me know if you attempt it for yourself. Feel free to ask me anything about my experience with the challenge or ask for help planning your daily dozen in the comments section. Thanks so much for watching and I'll speak to you soon. Bye!